All right, good morning, everybody. This is Megan McClare, the Director of Health Equity at Advancement Project California, and we are super stoked to be here to launch our Race Counts Initiative. So before we actually dive in, um, we're still expecting a few other folks to drop in. Wanted to go over a few housekeeping things. One is that this webinar is being recorded, so if for re any reason you have to jump off or your colleagues couldn't join, we will be making this available for you all to listen to at a later date. Two, just given the volume of folks that are going to be joining, we are going to keep everyone muted. And we will not be having a formal Q&A section uh, for this presentation, but we do have a chat box ready. So any questions that emerge as we're going through data or anything that comes up, please don't hesitate to share that along with your email address. We'll be sending out some frequently asked questions based on the feedback we get today, but then also we'll be following up with folks uh, based on questions that you have. So please don't hesitate to jump in. So with that, we'll go ahead and we will get started. Um, <clears throat> Race Counts is a project that has been in concept and planning for the last two years. And it really is a culmination of Advancement Project's commitment to doing ris rigorous data analysis with an intentional focus on racial equity and a commitment to being able to build community power. And so we are so heartened to see the, the large level of interest. We have over 400 RSVPs for today's conversation um, and being able to unveil this great product to you today. So going to the agenda, our goal is to be able to preview uh, racecounts.org, which actually went live and the switch was turned on, I think, not even an hour ago before we're sharing this with you all. To be able to share what the Race Counts Initiative is about and being able to highlight some of our key tools like our website as well as our launch report as a mechanism for being able to think differently around racial equity. We conceptualize this project understanding that the proxies that we've historically used like income and zip code are insufficient in being able to address the needs of our, our community uh, advocates and organizers on the ground. And so we're hoping that we can use these tools to elevate the conversation and be able to spark new conversations around racial justice. So today you'll get an overview of the initiative and then we we'll hope that you'll come away with a clear understanding of our three-dimensional framework for understanding racial equity at the county level, as well as a better grasp on the findings that have emerged from our research. We have now officially released racecounts.org and the report, so that'll be accessible to you as soon as you hop off this webinar. And then finally, we're really hopeful that you'll be as stoked about this project as we are, and you'll want to port, partner with us and find ways to support in getting the message out on these tools, as well as find ways that we can continue this conversation in different areas of your work. So let me introduce you to each of our speakers. So those that are just hopping on, this is Megan McClare, the Director of Health Equity at Advancement Project California. We also have our stellar leadership team in-house that includes John Kim, our Executive Director, who's going to set the frame for how race counts fits with the broader ecology of equity movements in California and broadly. Chris Ringwald, our Associate Director of Research, who will run us through the three-dimensional framework and our research methods and findings. Katie Smith, our Director of Communications, who has engineered and pioneered the website and the communications tool. And we're super grateful that we have our extended family here, Veronica Carrizales from California Calls, who's going to set the stage for how this can really util be utilized to move campaign efforts. We would be remiss if we didn't really talk about the partners that helped to shape and form this project from the start. Um, we are very proud to say that over the course of this project, we've been able to engage over 100 institutions and individuals from advising on our indicators to being able to give us feedback on our research method, helping us frame the findings overall. And so we don't have enough space on the slide to really lift every name um, that's there, but I kind of want to start to really express our gratitude to those that have gener generously given their time and thought partnership in moving this forward. First, our love goes to our steering committee, which includes California Calls, Pico California, and USC's Program for Environmental and Regional Equity. We wanted to think about how we have a research-driven tool that won't sit on the shelf, that'll be ready to go and be able to move within the organizer space. We knew that we needed these three partners to help you know, be architects in this thinking and be able to pioneer this project. Then we have, we listed the support of statewide partners who are able to help us look through county level data and what do we really want to say around the racial and regional nuances that exist across our very diverse state. And so we enlisted ACE California, Asian Americans Advancing Justice, Policy Link, Mobilize the Immigrant Vote, Yo California Free Our Dreams, and Chrissy Castro and Associates. And then finally, 
We couldn't do this without our funders. And so we want to thank them for helping to resource this project and being lead thinkers and being able to invest in intentional conversation around racial equity. And so our gratitude goes to the California Endowment, the California Wellness Foundation, the Rosenberg Foundation, and the Sierra Health Foundation. So today is November 15th, a date that's been marked in our books for a very long time. And so with this launch, we have two major tools that we're ready to talk through. Well, first is the report, which really makes the case for racial equity and how our research methods can really help us achieve that vision. We start with a frame that really talks about why racial equity and why we're doing that now and why this type of process really lends to the broader equity movements that are happening. Second, we talk about California's history of oppression, that we aren't the blue paradise that everyone thinks that we are. However, we really had a multiracial coalition that have historically been able to resist against these racialized policies that have impacted communities of color, as well as been able to formulate progressive solutions to be able to gain policy wins in the service of communities of color. And then we talk through the findings, and what we find to be most important is really the recommendation and the call to action, how to utilize racially driven data and how to give particular solutions to address the inequities that are emerging in our work. We also have the website, which I shared, just went live an hour ago, which will allow an online interactive tool for people to look at county level and statewide data across a variety of different issue areas, um, being able to look at it broken out by race that you'll be able to explore once we hop off this call. And then this also is a moment where we're kind of shifting gears. We've been in planning mode, preparation mode, and data crunching mode. And right now we're really excited to get this tool out into the world and be able to kind of figure out how this can really leverage us in living into a vision of racial justice. And so from here on, we'll be kind of addressing a series of presentations, discussions, and trainings all throughout the state to really figure out how we can really bring this research tool to life. So with that, I'm actually going to turn it around to our fearless leader, John Kim, who's the Executive Director of Advancement Project California. Thank you so much, Megan. Um, and good morning, everyone. Um, we're really happy that you could join us on the launch of this uh, initiative, Race Counts. Um, let me start by saying this. Uh, California actually has the tools to significantly lower racial disparities throughout the state. You know, over the past 20 years, we've seen a dramatic shift in our state's politics and our minds for the better. But at the same time, we've also seen an equally dramatic rise in the power and reach of community organizing and advocacy all around the state. And now, today, we're introducing Race Counts. You know, for too long and in many ways, we've sort of gotten overly comfortable with the idea that our public systems produced unconscionable racial inequities in the areas like crime and justice, education, jobs, and housing. And over time, these disparities became somehow unremarkable as though they were just a normal cost of doing business. And when you do try to do something about this, when you try to get a handle on these issues, the full scope of these disparities are sometimes vague or deep beneath the surface, otherwise difficult for us to actually get our eyes on uh, and get our arms around. The concept behind race counts is to dig deeper on the question of racial disparities, to dig deeper than we've ever done before. We actually see race counts as a sort of high definition MRI scan of California that can help us go underneath the surface, help us to actually see the sometimes hidden mechanics of racial disparities in every county on a wide range of issues and throughout the state. For example, you can see how racial disparities play out very differently in places like the Bay Area versus the Central Valley. In the Bay, we see tremendous prosperity, high levels of overall performance across our data indicators. But unfortunately, that prosperity is only for the few. A county like Marin is at the top of our charts in terms of performance in areas like economic opportunity, healthcare, and education. But Marin is also the most racially disparate, according to our research, uh, of any county in the state, number one in racial disparity in the state. Several other counties in the Bay Area, like San Francisco, Alameda, and San Mateo, all demonstrate the same dynamic that unfortunately shows that a rising tide does not lift all boats. Now, when you compare that with the Central Valley and some of those counties, you'll find similarly high levels of racial disparity, but you'll also see them in a very different context. For example, Fresno County sits at being the eighth most disparate county in the state. 
but it's sitting as also one of the lowest performing counties in the state, sitting at 53rd out of 58 counties on performance. With race counts, we have compiled and analyzed a larger set of data measuring racial disparities with, across seven different issue areas and for every county in the state. We can actually see across the state how the issue of crime and justice still lags as the highest level of racial disparity of any other issue that we measure. And when we dig deeper into this question of race, uh, of crime and justice, we find that it's driven at its high, to its high levels of racial disparities because of things like incarceration and fatalities by police. On the flip side, of our seven issues, we actually see that democracy issue as one of the lowest levels of racial disparities. And we feel that it's due to the tremendous efforts of community organizing and organizers making sure that disenfranchised communities have their voices heard in the polls and otherwise. This is particularly the case where community organizing has been strong for decades, like the Bay Area and Los Angeles, and it shows that we need to continue those efforts while also expanding to new parts of the state. This new data, this new technology, can also scan more deeply into particular counties, like LA. Right now, on our measures, LA sits at 30th uh, in terms of racial disparities out of 58 counties. So below average on racial disparities. But when you drill down to the issue of crime and justice again, LA jumps from being 30th in racial disparities to 14th in most racially disparate. And then again, when you drill down even farther, when you look at the issue specifically of incarceration, LA jumps to number two as the most racially disparate county when it comes to incarceration. And finally, unfortunately, we see how the overall dynamics of racial disparities weigh down, how they burden particular racial groups in different ways. Given the scope of this research, we can see how the African American communities carry the highest accumulated burden across the range, across the range of our indicators school suspensions, household income, incarceration, and overall life expectancy. At the same time, the Latino community, at 14.5 million in this state, represents the largest racial group impacted by these disparities, and there we see them struggling in areas like access to health care, the quality of their housing, and managerial occupations. We're also finding the hidden costs of these racial disparities uh, in some instances, we're finding that the API community may be performing well overall, but with support from our partners like Advancing Justice, we're able to disaggregate some of that data in our report and show how different ethnicities and, and racial groups within the API community are very much struggling uh, and has otherwise been hidden uh, under the mask of the model minority myth. With this initiative, we're hoping that local leaders and communities can get to a common diagnosis of their biggest problems, to create the space to identify a common prescription, and of course, come up with a common set of actions and ways to treat this, this issue of racial disparities. In these conversations, we find that the most important thing, the thing that we recommend most strongly, is that the communities and people that have been most impacted by these disparities should be at the center or to lead those conversations. Over the past 18 months, we have spoken, as Megan has mentioned, to over 100 organizations throughout the state, and they are ready. They have been ready to take action, to move their campaigns, to move the needle on these disparities. Uh, and now, with this new tool in their toolbox, we're really hoping to spark those local conversations, to support their advocacy campaign, and to actually invite all of us, all of us in this state, to take up the challenge of ending racial disparities in California. And with that, I'm going to hand it over to Chris Ringwald, uh, who can walk us through a little bit more about the research. Hello. Hi, I'm Chris Ringwald, Associate Director of Research at Advancement Project, and I'm here to give you an overview of the research and analysis that went into creating the findings that John just talked about. We reviewed the academic literature and consulted over 100 different organizers and advocates to choose data in seven issue areas that people on the ground can use to measure racial disparities and fight for change. We measured them in seven issue areas, as you see listed, crime and justice, education, healthcare access, healthy built environments, housing, economic, and opportun economic opportunity, and democracy. The 40 plus indicators on racecounts.org measuring racial disparities within those issue areas are listed on the slide and often in include often cited data like incarceration and home ownership and some new indicators that you may not have seen before 
like police diversity and teacher diversity. These data generally come from state and federal sources like the American Community Survey, California Department of Education, and California Department of Health. But while you may have seen many of these indicators, Race Counts calculates them in a different way, looking at racial disparity in a more nuanced way than, than ever before. It covers more areas across California than anything you've seen, for instance, all counties across the state. It has the broadest coverage across a range, those ranges of key issues uh, at, that I mentioned, crime, health, et cetera. Uh, and it also is a great platform for looking at connecting these data to policies and campaigns, um, in other words, solutions to, to some of the things we're seeing. Uh, so finally, Race Counts looks at all these data, not just saying racial disparity is bad everywhere, but in a nuanced way where we're factoring in performance and impact. So we're not just saying racial disparities are bad, but we're saying they're bad and different in different places. Uh, so there's different issue areas we need to focus on in different counties, uh, different ways we need to move forward uh, to removing these racial disparities. So let's turn to our three-dimensional view uh, of racial equity where we do mix in performance, disparity, and impact. So performance is how well are people doing uh, in a given county overall. So for instance, you know, graduation rates would be one of the measures where we look at performance. Disparity is how well different racial groups are doing compared to one another. So for instance, are whites doing as well as Latinos? Uh, are Asians doing as well as Pacific Islanders? We can look, we, we will compare each other, uh, races to each other uh, in different counties. And finally, uh, impact is how many people are affected. So we bring in the total populations uh, of each county to see uh, how many people are struggling under racial disparities and how well these, and how much the performance is impacting people. So with this three-dimensional understanding of racial equity, uh, we're able to categorize each of the counties into four groups, uh, which you're seeing by the circles colored in green, orange, uh, yellow, and red. So gains at risk, uh, and sorry, now we're looking at real data, the, co the composite uh, index across, where we basically smush all our indicators across uh, issue areas, and here's the composite index. At the top left, you're seeing the gains at risk quadrant, meaning uh, above average performance and below average disparity. So note there are still disparities, uh, but to a lesser degree than some of the other counties. And that means there are some gains for people of color to be seen in these counties. Uh, but we shouldn't ignore important sub-county issues and also protect these counties from threats on the horizon. So you'll see counties like uh, San Diego, Orange, uh, listed on your slide, or Sonoma, Napa, Contra Costa. Some of these counties, are in, within some of these counties, there are some good things going on, but also significantly important things we need to look at. The next quadrant going across is the prosperity for the few quadrant, and that speaks to the fact that a rising tide does not lift all boats. So you'll see counties there like Alameda and, and San Francisco where performance has improved dramatically due to the tech boom and other factors. But at the same time, we've seen black and brown residents being left behind with some of the greatest impacts being felt around education, criminal justice, and housing. Uh, so it becomes important to put the conversations of race front and center in, the, in these counties where performance has been so high, but at the same time, racial inequities have been so large. The next quadrant moving over, uh, the stuck and unequal quadrant, and we see counties there uh, like Fresno and Kings and Madera. This is a quadrant where we're seeing low performance and large, large racial disparities. Uh, the challenge for these counties is the need to simultaneously push for strategies that will improve overall performance and combat drivers for racial inequities. Finally, uh, in yellow, we're seeing the struggling to prosper quadrant where everyone is struggling and included, these counties often include uh, low-income white communities. So counties like uh, Kern, uh, Solano, and San Joaquin are, are in this quadrant. And so we want to, again, up front that there are sub-county dynamics that are being masked in this county level analysis. So for example, we're not saying that Beverly Hills is low performing, but we're saying Los Angeles overall, for instance, is performing uh, at, at lower rates than the Bay Area or some of those Bay Area counties that you're seeing uh, labeled. So this is a signal for these counties that we need to build new multiracial coalitions to address the issues around lower performance uh, in regards to issues like economic opportunity and be intentional about addressing and mitigating racial disparities in communities like South LA. So with this research framework, Race Counts is able to provide a more comprehensive picture of how racial disparity 
affects communities of color across the diverse counties and regions of California. One thing to note here about this quadrants, or these quadrants in this composite, is that it provides not only a comprehensive picture of where these counties sit in relation to their performance and their disparities, but it also might provide some sense of directionality, uh, a place for them to turn and to focus their attention as they proceed in building coalitions and building out new policies and thinking about the story they tell themselves as a narrative and where they want to go as a, as a county. Uh, one thing to be, so to be very clear, you know, these counties in the green uh, do not mean that they are all fine. There's still absolutely critical needs in terms of racial disparities that need to be addressed. And as you dig deeper into the website and our report, you'll see some of those things elucidated. But on the upper right, when you're in prosperity for the few, really what we're looking at is that in some of these counties, in particular, let's say in the Bay Area, like San Francisco and Alameda, you actually have a strong tradition of organizing uh, and advocacy that have been trying to move the civic discourse to not only think about prosperity, but prosperity and equity at the same time. What this research is showing is that those advocacy and organizing voices need to be heard much more need to be put front and center, and the discourse, the civic discourse in the Bay Area needs to shift to look at disparities first. Uh, if you're on the bottom right, stuck and unequal, this is a challenge because you're simultaneously going to need to be increasing your performance while decreasing your racial disparity. One key way to think about this, though, is that the amount of racial disparity is holding back performance. In other words, if you're able to concretely deal with the racial disparities in places like Fresno and Kings County and Madera, you actually will see an increase or lifting up of performance overall for that county. And so this is where we again say, focusing on racial disparities, putting that front and center can actually help everybody in those counties. And then finally, in the, in the bottom left, as, as Chris has mentioned, this is where there are new opportunities to think about you know, new coalitions, uh, new strategies and new narratives about how we all need to be working together to increase performance in places like Tulare and Kern and Merced and even Los Angeles. But again, we need to also simultaneously do that by not losing sight on some of the areas of really high disparity within the counties, like South LA or the East Side or what have you. Uh, and so what we really appreciate about this model is not just that it's really pretty and looks nice colors on, 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 a, on a chart here, but it actually provides some sense of directionality and how we proceed forward. Well, thanks, John. And as you saw, the composite uh, scatter plot of all the of all the indicators smushed together, you can also break these out by issue area and by indicator. So here we're looking at just the crime and justice issue area by itself. On the previous scatter plot, you saw LA was in actually in the yellow and a little bit more, um, uh, you know, on the, on the other quadrant. And you see, based on a county's individual issue area, that that you know circle can move across quadrants fairly quickly. So you're seeing that Los Angeles goes uh, to the red uh, quadrant here, meaning that it's a high disparity, low performing uh, county for this issue area, and, and obviously a very important one uh, in this issue area. Further, you can disaggregate these issue areas by their indicators and see uh, the counties move even further. So, for instance, you're seeing Los Angeles move much further to the right, meaning it's much higher, um, it's much more disparate uh, in terms of incarceration, which, which unfortunately was the most disparate indicator of all the indicators we looked at. So, Los Angeles is an important county uh, for us to start work. Uh, others, including Sutter and San Francisco, uh, that are labeled are, are, are also important. So you can see through this view, different counties are going to have different paths toward higher performance and racial equity based on the issue area or indicator uh, that you're looking at. Thank you so much for that, Chris and John, for laying the context and getting that deeper dive on the research methods. So we are seeing this really kind of the beginning of phase two for us, where the research will continue to be explored. Um, we have data updates that are already on their way. We really see ourselves as creating this as like a benchmark for measuring our progress around racial equity and continue to and plan to continue to update this data as it becomes available. We also understand that there are these sub-county dynamics that aren't necessarily covered, and Chris noted that a little bit. 
and so wanting to be able to do some deeper dives on city level analysis to better inform our understanding of our racial equity. Starting next month, we'll be releasing a series of quarterly reports that focus in on areas where we're seeing some interesting findings around racial inequities. We'll be starting with healthcare access, and then the beginning of 2018, we'll be focusing on criminal justice. We're also enlisting uh, support from our partners, Advancing Justice, to, be a, to do a disaggregated report for API populations. And we're also planning in the fall to be able to do a report on the state of indigenous peoples to really identify and address some of these data challenges with what's currently being collected. We are going to bring this show on the road, as I noted before, and being able to do partner presentations and facilitate discussions around how we really transform our systems and identify campaigns to really move the conversation on racial equity forward. And then we're super excited about being able to do it, being able to do these organizer trainings that are being led by Pico California and California Calls, which Veronica is going to tell us a little bit more about. So this is just to say that while the, the website is ready to go, that there's more research and data and analysis that we want to be able to provide to this effort. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Veronica Carrizales, who's the Director of Policy and Campaign Development at California Calls. Great. Thank you, Megan. Um, I guess just to start off, um, as the data and race count shows, thanks to decades of successful organizing and mobilizing, particularly in the Bay Area and Los Angeles, we, have, we are seeing lower levels of racial disparity in certain indicators related to democracy, including census participation, registering to vote, and voting in midterm and presidential elections. So I want to emphasize for, for everyone on the webinar that the changes that we have seen in the Bay Area and Los Angeles didn't just happen, right? We all know that. Um, they were the result of bottom up of a bottom up strategy by multiple organizations to transform the electorate by consistently engaging new and infrequent voters who tend to be women, immigrants, young people, and people of color in a concerted way during elections and in between elections. Just to give you an example, California Calls, the organization that I work with, has led 17 civic engagement programs since 2009. And we have built a supportive voter base of about 710,000 voters statewide. And we've doubled the turnout of our base voters from 10 to 20%. In partnership with NextGen and, and community-based organizations uh, that make up the Million Voters Project, we registered 83,000 new voters in the three months leading up to the November 2016 election. Our strategy has not just included outreach and education on key issues on the ballot, but voter registration and organizing in targeted communities. So the data provided through race counts is critical to all of the work that we do. By clearly showing the gaps our communities are facing, it equips us as organizers to better organize and engage our communities on the critical issues that are important to our base and to develop a platform of issues or policies that could address the, these disparities. More recently, as a movement, we have had um, a number of victories that we can all be proud of on key issues like taxing the rich to increase funding for education through the passage of Proposition 30 and 65, um, taxing tobacco to expand funding for provider fees for people who receive Medi-Cal, sentencing reform victories through Proposition 47, and giving people second chances by emphasizing rehabilitation through Proposition 57. What we have learned is that it's not enough to have the victories, but we also have to have, we also have to have a focus on implementation and outcomes by race. The data and race counts can show us where we are making a difference and where more work needs to be done. And, and folks, we need to be thinking about how we define success, right? The definition of success is essential and it has to be rooted in racial equity so that we're tackling problems together that result in better outcomes for all of our communities. As organizers, we are excited to have these tools so that they're enhancing our work. Um, and to help all of you guys navigate the website, we are putting together a curriculum that could be used by organizers, not only to navigate the data and the website, but to also help organizers brainstorm ways to incorporate the data into your organizing. We hope that all of you can use the Race Counts tools to refine your existing campaigns or to fuel no, new efforts. So we're calling on all of you as organizing groups to use this data and work together to push local and state local governments uh, to address these disparities so that they can measure and address racial equity outcomes in their policies and practices so that together we can create a better California for everyone. 
much. All right. <clears throat> Thank you, Veronica. Uh, everyone, this is Katie Smith. I'm the Director of Communications for Advancement Project California. And now what we're going to do is just take you through a live demo of the website. So just one moment here as we get there and we get to the home page. So this website is made for you, for the folks that Veronica just talked about, for the people who are doing the work on the ground, driving these campaigns and working on racial justice. And so what we did is built a site that is a tool for your efforts. Um, this is the home page, so we can say this is the front door of the tool. Oftentimes people come through a side door, so for example, you know, straight into what I'm going to show you is a state page or a county page or into a campaign. But I'm just going to walk you through how you can get within three clicks to just about anywhere on the website that you could, um, that, well, to support your work, frankly. And we're going to use the example that Chris shared earlier with Los Angeles crime and justice and incar incarceration. But before we get there, let me just show you a little bit more of the home page. So start exploring as we can go into this really cool scatter plot that uh, Chris and John were talking about. We're going to get there in a second, but right now we're just going to scroll. I'm going to show you that on the website, you can actually see uh, the performance disparity impact, the 3D methodology explained here. So some of the slides that you saw earlier are here on the website and will help explain sort of how we think about the scatter plot. Um, the X and Y access, the low and high, you know, for performance and disparity, and our definition of racial equity and what we're working for, towards. Um, as you keep ex exploring the home page, you can see there's a button here to read the report. Um, Megan, I think, went into in-depth uh, detail, you know, sort of saying, like, look, we, there's a lot here. This is not just a website. There's a lot of thinking behind this and a lot of work that's to come, and I think you'll get a lot of that information in that report, so we encourage you to read that. Um, you can go straight into a map, so there's lots of different ways to view the data. You can go into the scatter plot, which I'm going to show you in just a moment, or you can go straight into county detail pages. You can also go straight into, uh, you know, all these different key issue pages and get, like I said, to just about anywhere that you need within three clicks. So let's test that theory. We'll start exploring. So here is what we call the state page. This is where you're going to get the full picture. I'm going to find a county, so I'm going to find Los Angeles. I'm going to click on crime and justice as a key issue. You'll see that that changed the indicators here, and I'm going to go to incarceration. What you probably saw as I chose those different fi filters is that the, the <laughs> how do I get rid of this? Pardon me one second. Uh, that the bubble started to shift. So remember the bubbles are telling us um, the population size. And what we see here is that, you know, Los Angeles, uh, similar to the narrative that you heard earlier, is the most disparate. So it's, in, it's the second most disparate <laughs> county. Um, uh, the impact is quite high because of population size. And so it's in the stuck and unequal section of this scatter plot. So that's one way that we can view it. Let's look at that in a different way. So we can go into a county detail page. So now we're going to go from the state page with, with that scatter plot, and now we're at the county page. Um, you can actually compare counties to each other up here. We encourage you to share. We'll get to that in a second. Um, you can roll over a lot on this website. So one of the fun things about this website is that it's very interactive. So definitely use your mouse to roll over things. So there's the population by race. You can go into the map. We'll see that in a second. You can also get these key takeaways. Um, you know, and here it is, you know, the narrative now in a key takeaway form that we were just talking about. But let's, let's scroll down, and I'm going to skip over this heat table for now. I'm just going to go straight into uh, the crime and justice um, key issue bar chart. And what you're seeing me scroll through is what we've done is for every county page, all seven key issues are represented and all the different indicators for the key issues are represented here. So I can just go to Los Angeles. I can see how Los Angeles ranks for crime and justice. I can hit incarceration. You're going to see that these bar charts are going to change. When I roll over them, you can see the stat box to the right actually gives you a lot more information. So basically what we've done is at the state page, 
we give you this meta view, and when you get to the county page, we give you a little bit more of a micro view, so you can get a little bit more of the richness of the data here. So we can see that um, you know Asian and Pacific Islanders have the best rate, and that um, the black community, the difference from the best is is 20, right? So I think what was that stat? How do I say that? It's like 100 times, or it's 20 times. But I'm thinking of the other. I'm speaking to Chris while we're on this webinar, so pardon me for a second. So 20 times um, worse off. So this is one way that we can get, you saw it within three clicks, to just about like from the meta to the micro view, pretty much everything that you need here. Uh, you can also get to these pages not just through the home page, but through the, uh, the main navigation. So again, here's the state page. When you scroll this, there's actually a lot more on this page. We encourage you to explore. You can, you can choose the county up here. You can also, like I said, go straight to the key issue pages. So, you know, if we go here into the crime and justice, you're going to see this a little bit more detailed at a California sort of level. We can also uh, see here the incarceration rate again, but again, from a California level and broken down by race. Okay. Now, you can also see it from the map, because some po folks like to see things spatially. So if you can also just say, OK, well, I want to see this sort of how you know this looks visually across all the different counties, I can again click Los Angeles, uh, go to Crime and Justice. You're going to see the um, indicators pop up for that particular key issue. And then you're going to see that when you roll over this legend, that Los Angeles is a high disparity and low performance county and it's stuck and unequal, right? You can do that for all of these counties. You can roll over and, and find all the different different information. And again, all this gives you sort of, you know, the high level macro, but when you go into the county pages, it gives you more of that mac micro uh, story. Now, all roads lead to campaigns, as you heard us speak about. Uh, so, you know, all this data is really informing the, the work of the folks on the ground. So you can find a lot more here. And uh, just open this up really quickly. This is going to be filled out and be much more dynamic in the future as these campaigns uh, start to utilize the data further. Um, also, I just want to remind folks that you can get the launch report in the data section of the website. So you just click here, and there it is. You can download the report and get the full story. Um, and then if you want to just know a little bit more about us and facts, this is a key section for you. If you just want to say, hey, what was that again? What was that, you know, answers to that particular question? You know, what do the colors mean? This is where you go to. Okay, so that is the website. I am going to now move to another tool we want to tell you about, which is the communications toolkit. I'm going to run through this just sort of quickly. Uh, basically, we want your help to get the word out. Oh, that went way too fast. Let me do that differently. So uh, there's, you know, instructions here on how you can use the toolkit and gives you some background on timeline. Again, this is just, you know, a handy tool so you understand, like, all the background on the project. But more importantly, we want you to know how to talk about it. So beyond the facts, you'll see some key messaging. You know, as you start to talk about this with your colleagues and other folks on the ground, um, these messages we find are very helpful in, can, you know, conceptualizing what the project is about and why we're doing this and what the call to action is. Um, this is a sample press release. This actually went out today. The big call to action here is that we want your quotes. So the folks of you that are listening to this right now, if you see that this data supports your work, we want to know about it. Please go to the website, fill out the survey, and we will get, um, we will get in touch with you. Um, and we're happy to link you up with media, as that makes sense. Uh, and here's the big punchline. We really would love for you to help us get this message out. So please, uh, here are the assets. You can download all of these. This, this um, toolkit was sent to you this morning with the webinar link. So you now have this, and you have all the tools you need to get this message out. OK, so I'm going to now go back to uh, the presentation and get rid of this. Uh, that's not what I want. Well, you just go to me. Sure. 
So just lifting up, and thank you so much for going through that for us, Katie. Um, as you can see, it's, a, it's quite an extraordinary tool. Um, I really would encourage folks to start digging through all of the data. Um, what we have found um, through the course of this project is that there is so much to mine. There's so many places that we have yet to look. Uh, and so we really encourage you, we wanted to open it up for all of us to kind of have direct access to this stuff so you can help us what's, to really understand what's going on in Imperial Valley. Not only using it for your campaign, but making sure those around the state really understand what's going on there. And so we really want to make sure that this is a two-way street in terms of our conversation. The one thing, last thing I want to mention is that the primary goal of this project was to support partners on the ground. So we are trying to use this platform to lift up where you all uh, are actually fighting to move the needle on these inequities, where you might be having campaigns at the local levels or at the statewide levels. And so as Katie's mentioned, we've shown you guys, we've shown you guys that, that campaigns page, which we're really hoping to flush out uh, as we move forward um, down the line. Uh, so far, we've already populated it uh, with campaigns like the Make It Fair campaign, which is focused on closing the corporate uh, tax loopholes. Uh, in Proposition 13. Uh, we're lifting up some efforts around the better implementation of Proposition 47, and of course lifting up uh, some fights, local fights, and even some statewide ones around housing rights and anti-gentrification efforts. And so in this way, this, this platform can also be very powerful to not only identify and point out where there are inequities and disparities, but we also want to make sure that people can see a link to say, hey, who's doing something about this, and be able to show them your campaign. So please, uh, we encourage you uh, to share and send in any more campaigns that you would like uh, listed up on this platform. Well, great, and so with that, we want to wrap up with a call to action and I'll ask for you all. And so now that the switch on the website has been turned on, we're really excited to be able to get some feedback on it. Ultimately, we strive to be able to create a tool that is usable and able to align with the efforts that are happening as John had listed out. So what we would like you to do is to check out racecounts.org. It, it should be available to everyone as of today. We have a nifty survey that is on the bottom right hand corner that you can um, fill out and this will give us feedback on the overall user experience and then ways to really kind of lift up and frame the data that will be most useful for campaigns that are currently happening. Two, we hope after checking out racecounts.org you are as excited about the potential of this project as we are. And so we're asking that you can help us get the message out. And so we have the comms toolkit that Katie had walked us through. And so we ask that you follow us on Twitter and Facebook and share our posts out and also give us feedback on how we can actually message this stuff more effectively. So with that, we will, oh, I'll turn it to John. So um, you've now heard from our team about this powerful new initiative and this new tool. Uh, I want to just close off by saying that now really is the time for this conversation. Now is the time for us to get serious about these racial disparities. Like I said at the beginning, we now have all the tools we need to take a serious dent on what's been uh, weighing this state down for too many years. Now is the time because for next year in 2018, it'll actually be the 50th anniversary of when California officially declared itself the golden state. But we know that people of color and indigenous folks had not felt the glow of that Golden State promise for the last 50 years. If we want to turn that around for the next 50 years, we have this opportunity to reclaim that dream, to reclaim the dream of the Golden State, and this time, though, to become the Golden State for all of us. So thank you all for joining us today, and... With that, we will let you go. Um, so you have our contact information. So again, this is Michael McClair, the Director of Health Equity and Advancement Project California. I've enlisted the support of my colleague, Wajenda Shimbeshi, to address any questions that you might have around race counts, how we can continue this conversation, as John had said, for feedback around the overall tool, because we're really excited to get this out to you and want to hear from you. So with that, we're going to wrap things up, and we look forward to being in contact soon. Have a great afternoon, everybody. Thank you.